Tucker, Florida, here for the Patriot Awards, a highlight of the year. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. The collapse of the cryptocurrency exchange, FTX, is, even if you're not interested in cryptocurrency, a history-changing event. It may turn out to be the biggest single-day loss of assets in the history of money. Billions of dollars evaporated in just moments, and it's still not clear what happened to a lot of that money. It just disappeared. And as it did, it sparked a growing financial crisis across entire sectors of the economy, a disaster that quite possibly could get very worse very soon. But the story of the FTX implosion is bigger even than the global recession it may cause. It is the story of the complete and utter corruption of the people who run our country. The very people who should have been covering and regulating and reining in FTX and its 30-year-old founder, Sam Bankman-Fried, were instead profiting from the scam. Not just a few of them, nearly all of them. From the news media, paid off by Sam Bankman-Fried, to the leadership of the Democratic Party, also paid off by Sam Bankman-Fried, to the chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC commissioner himself, Gary Gensler. They all knew that FTX was not a real company and that Sam Bankman-Fried was a fraud. And if they didn't know that, they certainly should have known that because it was very obvious to anyone who bothered to pay attention. One of the few who did pay attention was a short seller called Mark Cahotis, who took one look at Sam Bankman-Fried, SBF for short, and recognized here is a con artist, obviously. Watch this tape, which aired on Hedge Eye TV, a small investment advice channel, back in October. When anyone tries to pin SBF down on where he made his money, you can't get a cogent answer. Then you take into account that SBF is bailing out known Ponzi's and frauds in the crypto space. Everyone who's gone bankrupt or is a proven fraud. But nothing here fits. Everyone, everything reads like this thing is a complete scam. And I think this thing is dirty and rotten to the core. So if that guy on a small audience investment channel could tell that Sam Bankman-Fried was a fraud, where was Gary Gensler of the SEC? And by the way, the tell in the sentence you just heard is that Sam Bankman-Fried couldn't explain where he got his money. Here you are, a 30-year-old billionaire. How'd you do that? If you can't tell us, then maybe that's a red flag, and you would think most investors would have recognized it. But for the most part, they didn't. Nor do they seem to notice the obvious incompetence of Sam Bankman-Fried's business partner slash girlfriend, Caroline Ellison. Ellison was totally and obviously unqualified for the job she claimed to have. She had no track record of success at anything. She reportedly wrote online about her drug use. And then, on a podcast back in May, months before the collapse, Caroline Ellison just came out and admitted that she had no idea what she was doing. Watch this. Do you think that you have been able to pull this thing off without your mathematics degree, or it has been the pillar of your trading activity? Uh, yeah, absolutely could pull it off without my math degree. <laughs> Use very little math. When you start out as like an intern and you, you know, do something and accidentally lose, you know, maybe a thousand dollars for your desk, you're like, oh God, like everyone's going to hate me now. Like this is terrible. <laughs> and uh, yeah, over time you have to uh, sort of, yeah, get comfortable with larger and larger uh, swings of money. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of a good example of a trade where I've lost a ton of money um well i don't know i probably don't want to go into specifics too much yeah, with that <laughs> oh i've lost a ton of money no big deal it's not mine and no there's no math here at the cryptocurrency exchange <laughs> well, let's send her billions of dollars lost a lot of money a lot of money that investors including institutional investors including individuals who are hoping to retire with that money all gone because we don't do math. <laughs> it's so outdated. But here's the amazing thing. 
none of this seemed to phase the biggest institutional investors. Sequoia, their entire job is to what? Assess risk. But it wasn't really about risk and reward. It was about something else. Earlier this year, Michael Grimes, a former spokesman for Bill Clinton, who seemed to be making an awful lot of money somehow in the financial world, approached Elon Musk, the world's richest man, with an investment offer on behalf of SBS. Sam Bakeman fried wants you to invest. Elon Musk didn't get to be the richest man on the planet by investing in things like that, so he apparently smelled BS and turned Grimes down. But in their exchange, which has since become public, Grimes multiple times told Musk that, by the way, Sam Bankman Freed is a huge donor to the Democratic Party. Quote, major Democratic donor, Grimes wrote to Musk, second to Bloomberg in donations to Biden campaign. What does that have to do with the investment? It should be irrelevant, but that was the substance of the pitch. What is this exactly? It doesn't quite sound like a business. It sounds like a hybrid of some kind, and not in a reassuring way. Now, some of this was happening in secret, but a lot of it was happening right out in public, right in front of the news media. And of course, a lot of them knew Sam Bankman Freed because he was sending a lot of the money. And when he wasn't, he was desperate for the publicity they could provide. Sam Bankman Freed was on the cover of more magazines than Madonna. So, they probably should have been asking questions about his business, but none of them did. They promoted him. Watch. They call him the JP Morgan of crypto, right? Yeah, <laughs> the Michael Jordan of crypto, if you will. <laughs> so why should you care about a floppy-haired, vegan, fidget-spinning crypto billionaire who occasionally sleeps on a beanbag chair? During the so-called crypto winter, the 30-year-old CEO has been referred to as crypto's white knight. JP Morgan of this generation, Sam Bankman Freed's FTX. Is he the Jay Gould of our era or is he the JP Morgan of our era? I think it's yet to be determined. Yet to be is determined. He the, is he Vanderbilt? He could be. Is he Harriman? Possibly. Is he the Credit Mobiliar scandal? Is he Carnegie? If he gives a lot of libraries, he is. <laughs> He's the JP Morgan of finance, of crypto. He's the Michael Jordan of crypto. But wait a second. Michael Jordan's not in crypto. He played basketball. Well, Sam Bankman Free's not really in crypto either. <laughs> How are we all getting rich? Uh, who knows? Don't ask questions. He's a JP Morgan. He'll be a trillionaire. So why were all these people pushing a scam that any normal person, even a person with no background in finance and just sort of a elementary understanding of profit loss equations could have seen was probably going to collapse in the end? Now, we're not sure. Stupidity clearly plays a role. So does the herd instinct. So all we can ask really is, who is benefiting from all of this? Well, we know that the Democratic Party benefited, as we told you. Sam bankman fried donated $40 million to Democrats this cycle. That's more than any other donor apart from Soros. Then he pledged another billion dollars for the next election, a billion dollars in one election, because that's democracy. He wasn't doing this in private. He was bragging about it. And then he was going on in public about how politicians, Democratic politicians, were begging him for money. Watch this. You know, so how do you find political fundraisers? They come to you directly? Is it easy to get to you and say, we need this money for this candidate? And what type of candidates do you tend to support? Oh, yeah. Well, if you if I you know pulled out my phone here and just looked at my last 10 text messages, you know, about half of them are going to be uh, people asking for, you know, po politicians asking for, for contributions. So why were you telling us this in public? And by the way, if you're shaking like a naked man in a snowstorm in the middle of an interview, maybe there's something wrong with you. Send that boy another billion dollars. So how substantial are we overstating this? We're making a partisan point so that things collapsed. It was clearly a Ponzi. Are we trying to attack the Democratic Party now? No, it's actually justified. This guy was a major donor, major donor. According to the head of Citadel, defeating Donald Trump was literally on the balance sheet of FTX. Watch this. FTX crosses a, in, into, a, into a zone that, that all of us are worried about. You know, on the balance sheet of FTX is a line called Trump lose. And Sam was the second biggest donor to Democratic candidates. I'm going to leave it to everybody else to draw their own conclusions about what you're saying here. Then the reporter says, we're out of time. We can't go too deeply into that. Really? Let's go more deeply into it. It's pretty interesting. 
So, of course, politicians loved the guy because he was just a cash spigot, and that's what they want most. But where were the regulators? Because there is a government that's supposed to be independent of office holders, a regulatory state that keeps Ponzi's from happening. Where were they? Well, Sam Bankman Fried was himself invited to Washington to consult on crypto regulations. <laughs> and then he posed for a picture with Maxine Waters, who's the head financial regulator in the Congress. And then the Washington Post, which is the hometown newspaper of government, did no reporting on his actual business. They just wrote a puff piece about how cool is it that the guy with funky hair who can't sit still and sleeps on a beanbag is getting super rich. How did he pull this scam? How did he do that? Well, he did it with religion. That's the quickest way to blind people. If they think you share a common faith, maybe they'll ignore it. And that religion is effective altruism. There are a lot of effective altruists. Maybe you haven't heard of that. It's, it is a kind of religious movement. It's very popular in the tech world and the finance world throughout Silicon Valley and parts of New York. The idea is that you make money not because you're greedy, not because you have a bottomless pit inside you of need that can never be filled, but because you want to help other people and you want to help them in the most efficient way. You want to benefit the greatest numbers of people in the most efficient way. So that means effective altruists get to underpay their housekeepers. They get to stiff the waiter on the tip. And of course, they need those to say they do. But that's OK, because they're deeply concerned about abstract tragedies like global warming. So if nothing else, effective altruism gives you a moral cover as you rip off investors in order to live tax-free in splendor in some beachfront paradise, as Sam Bankman-Fried did and to this day continues to do. He's still in Albany in the Bahamas. So it goes without saying that Sam Bankman-Fried talked a lot about effective altruism. And in return, FTX enjoyed a very high ESG score, higher than Exxon, which gets your ambulance to the hospital and your plane in the air to see your kids and heats your home. Sam Bankman-Fried was considered a moral leader even as he was ripping off millions of people. But no one benefited long-term from FTX's collapse or will benefit more than government regulators. They are pointing to FTX and demanding more control over cryptocurrency and ultimately the end of the cash economy. Why do we think they're going to do that? Because they're already working on it. SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce said this week that the demise of XTS could be a, quote, catalyst for more regulation. So why should you worry about that? Well, because as we saw in Canada last year, crypto is a huge problem for governments. Governments can't control, ideally, cryptocurrency. You can't freeze someone's personal cold wallet with crypto in it if you don't like what they say. So what does this have to do with the collapse of XTX, FTX? Well, it turns out that Sam Bankman-Fried's girlfriend, Caroline Ellison, has a lot of connections to regulators. In fact, the biggest regulator of all in this country. Her father, Glenn, is an MIT professor who worked at that university alongside, drumroll please, Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC, which is in charge of cryptocurrency regulation. FTX's general counsel used to work with Gensler on the Commodities Future Trading Commission. Now Gensler is about to get a lot more power. So this thing swells to unsustainable size and inevitably implodes. It collapses, and that collapse is used for a pretext to do what they've been planning to do all along. So it probably shouldn't shock you that right after FTX's collapse, every major bank in this country announced a new partnership with the New York Fed to establish a new digital currency. Oh, digital currency, the one they can regulate and control. Citigroup, Wells Fargo, MasterCard, HSBC, all working on a 12-week digital dollar pilot. The Fed describes this project as a regulated liability network. So what does this mean long term? Well. If they have control of your money because it's digital, you can't stash it under your bed. If they don't like what you say, they can turn it off and you're impoverished. In other words, this whole thing is a bigger scam even than it seems, and it was made possible by political sloganeering. And Sam Bankman-Fried, if nothing else, is not stupid, and he knows that well. As he put it in a message to a reporter the other day from his hideout in the Bahamas, the woke posturing is the most effective possible business boy. And we're quoting, I feel bad who, for those who get effed by it, he wrote, by this dumb game we woke Westerners play where we all say the right shibboleths and everyone likes us. In other words, if you suspected all of this was a scam, all the moral posturing, all the lectures you get about how they're great and you're bad, this was all a way to blind you to the fact that there was a massive ripoff going on, you might be on the right track.
Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.